Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. In the last episode, we had a very long, annoying time with a bunch of annoying side quests, which I guess shouldn't be all that annoying. Just that, like, the game does a good job at pacing or spacing out the story with the puzzles, so it doesn't become too annoying. But when I have all those puzzles bunched up together in one, it becomes really annoying to go through. And I considered just, like, having them done as I go along, but then I would, it would be a bit more difficult to follow as a guide and uh, have all the uh, minigame answers all in one place. So for that reason, I make it kind of boring in exchange. So I apologize if you don't really like that format, but I think it's the one that works best. If we, maybe we'll do something different in a future late in LP, but for now, let's finally enter Herzen Castle. It would appear you've solved at least 80 puzzles. I commend your perseverance and proclaim you worthy of entrance to this castle. Welcome. Sorry to intrude, but we are investigating an important antique, this box we have here. The emblem on its lid seems connected to your house in some way. Would you have time to answer a few questions? Hmm. I think this matter would best be addressed Wow, this place is really something else. Indeed, Luke. This castle is extremely impressive. Right this way, please. Good evening. Welcome to my house. So, if I understand correctly, you're saying people fear the box because they believe it kills anyone who opens it. <laughs> That's quite a story, isn't it? It seems that the design on this box is connected to your family in some way. Can you tell me anything about this? It's true that it was a Herzen family heirloom. Although I parted with it a number of years ago, the garish emblem you mentioned wasn't exactly, ah, uh, suited to my taste. Personally, I think it's quite spectacular. Oh, is that so? Well, chalk it up to my bad taste then. You know, I don't think he's telling us the whole story. Perhaps not. It's hard to say just yet. I'm sorry I'm not much help, though I confess, visitors are always delightful. I'm sure you've had a long journey, so please, do stay the night. Prepare the quarters for our guests, Nigel. Yes, right away, Master. Uh -huh. Wow, this is the poshest room I've ever seen. It's a room befitting of the wealthiest and most influential family of Folsons. I have a hard time believing a place as pretty as this is, uh, has a vampire lurking about it. Oh, you never know, Luke. Maybe Anton himself is a vampire, and you just haven't realized it yet. Anton? No way, he seemed like a perfectly nice guy to me. Wait a second, I thought you didn't believe in vampires. Are you pulling my leg? But there is something strange going on here, now that you've mentioned it. Remember the picture we saw in the Harrison Museum? Anton was in it, wasn't he? The thing is, even though the photo was taken 50 years ago, Anton doesn't look a day older. So it's been bothering you too, has it? I can't quite understand how it could be possible. It's especially odd given that Mr. Beluga has clearly aged since the picture was taken. It would seem that both Anton and his castle warrant further examination. There's that famous latent intuition acting up again. I suppose you could say that, though I'd hardly call it famous. Why don't we start our exploration of the castle with this room? Good idea, let's get to it! We're finally in the castle. God darn it, Sulu, I regret everything. There's a fascinating painting. 
Have you ever seen such a con convincing illustration of a gala? Or a convincing pronunciation of illusion? From what we've seen of this castle, I'm certain the ball was extremely opulent. My, it's gotten late. There's time for a quick puzzle and then it's off to sleep, alright? Wow, one more puzzle before bed. It's like a bedtime story for him. Puzzle number 130, The Strange Painting. The couple in this piece seem to be dancing high in the air, floating and possibly near the chandelier. But as it turns out, the when viewed properly, there's nothing strange at all about this picture. If you look closely enough, one peculiar area of the painting hints that the reason the whole picture seems so odd. Find the peculiar area and circle it to learn the truth. Hint number one. Many things about the painting are a little off, but what one little detail seems the most unusual to you? Hint number two. Thoroughly inspect the couple in the center of the picture. The answer is there somewhere. Hint number three. The couple seems to be dancing in midair, so naturally you must be curious about what they're standing on. Look down at their feet. There's something strange going on where those feet meet the ground. Do you not see it? The solution is that their reflection is touching the ground connected to their feet, so therefore they are not floating. Just leave it to me. Piece of cake. It really is a magnificent picture. Oh, what's this? Luke, tell me, do you... Do these two look familiar to you? It looks like Anton. And is that Katia? Hmm, perhaps, perhaps not. I don't know. Everything seems a bit weird in terms of, like, just trying to piece together when everything took place. It's our biggest mystery, it seems. And hey, there were four hint coins in this room. We're rolling in it. And wait a minute. There's no shoe icon, so we literally can't leave. Well, that's reassuring. I wish Luke was all like, Professor, the shoe icon is gone. We can't escape. Uh, but no, what are we supposed to do? This picture? I say, look at this picture, Luke. Is that false sense there? I think so. The entire, the artist's inscription down here says this painting is 50 years old. It looks pretty much the same as the full sense outside our window, though. Hmm. What are you thinking, Professor? Oh, it's nothing. I was just pondering something. My, it's gotten late. It's been quite a day for us, so perhaps it's time to turn in. Yeah, I could use some sleep. Good night, Professor. Just the main course for this evening. And my, don't they look fresh. <laughs> oh, lovely. You're awake. It's been far too long since I've encountered prey so feisty. Anton, what sort of madness is this? I knew it! You are a vampire! Well, if that's the case, it was rather foolish for you to venture here, wouldn't you say? But I'm afraid it's too late now. I must begin preparations. In the meantime, why don't you just stay put and enjoy each other's company? After all, It'll be your last chance. Mm. 
Did you hear that? Anton's going to eat us for dinner! Luke, listen to me. Take a deep breath and collect yourself. But... There's no cause for worry, my boy. Whoever tied these ropes did a poor job. With a little work, I may be able to get free. He just beefs up and rips the ropes off. No, unfortunately not. Puzzle number 131, how to escape. A man sits... Oh, what is with this mustache guy? He's had such an exciting and exhilarating life. A man sits bound by a lone length of rope among several points. Only has no hope of untying his bonds, he could still move his legs. Where were he to stand up and run away, his long trail of rope looks like it might catch on at least one of those posts. He'll need to use his legs to pull up any posts that prevent him from running away before he could dash off. Mark any posts that prevent the man from, you from running away. Hint number one. Your best bet here is to just look at how the rope is wrapped around the poles. Try using the memo function to trace out the path the rope takes around things. Hint number two. The man only needs to remove a single post in order to escape. Hint number three. The two strands of rope coming from coming off from the front of the man's cocoon form a big loop. Think about which posts are located inside the loop and which are outside the loop. Did I say are located did I say outside twice? I don't know. All the posts are on the left half of the picture seem as if they can properly stay where they are. The solution is that you want to remove a, this one. Consider this puzzle solved. I kind of wish his thinking animation was him tied up still. He was just like a worm, like burp, burp, burp. You did it. Hoorah. We're finally free, but there must have, but there's no time to stand around. We must find a way out quickly. Got that taken care of. And of course we gotta examine everything. Some rather dangerous items in here, I'll say. They really step it up. Like I gotta say, like I haven't really talked about that much, like in comparison to the previous ones. I said in the beginning that I think the latent games get better and better as time goes on. This game steps it up immensely. Like, I was blown away when the start when this stuff started happening. The the first game did have some dark themes in it, but like when this happened, I was just like, oh my god, this is actually really sick and terrifying. And like all the cutscenes and their improvements and the added voice acting, it's all just really cool. But enough about cool stuff, let's get the heck out of here. Oh no, we're locked in. There's no place to run. Calm yourself, Luke. There's bound to be another way out of this room. Look around you. I can see the key, if only I could reach it. Here, let me see if I can reach it. Layton, can't you just grab it because you're taller? You don't have to have a puzzle for it. 133, grab the key. Oh god, it's a sliding puzzle. Oy. Let's get down to business, I suppose. Is it going to be the final sliding puzzle in the game? I doubt it. Uh, what do we want to do? We want to move this right here. Uh, this up there. Gonna want to move the yellow one down in here. Uh, do that. Uh, let's see, is this actually like how it's set up in real life? Like there's an actual bunch of blocks that we need to rearrange in order to, well, I guess because this world's filled with puzzles, I guess like it wouldn't be too outlandish to be like that, but it's just really seems weird. Um, let's do this. And bring this one over here. Yellow, red, and green go over here. Red, a green down. Uh, we can finally move the key down here as well. Yellow goes up in here to take the place of the key. Uh, this gets brought over here and here. Uh, do that and that. Uh, go right here. Bring this all the way down. Do this, uh, this, that might not have been it, but no, that was it. Uh, that, and this, and we're good. Consider this puzzle solved. Ta-da! A true gentleman leaves no puzzle on It'd be kind of funny if, like, you maxed out the counter on there to, uh, if, like, it got to 99, then, like, it would it just automatically fail you and you would lose pickerats. There we are. The door is unlocked now. Freedom is ours, Luke. 
Got the final diary key. How fitting it was in a puzzle about a key. In order to deal with the swine who sneak into full sense by night like rats and steal our gold, I have decided to quite literally play the part of a monster. Though focused on this, at times my thoughts turn to that glided, gilded box and the letter inside. I now suspect that neither made it to her. Oh, my dear Sophia, just to hear from you is all I desire. So that poses a few questions. A, who is Sophia? And B, there was no letter in the Elysium box when we opened it. So who has it now? This looks terrifying. I think this, wait, this is like, I opened up the, uh, my first game file to see where I left off, just to, like check some things. This is where the game ends right here, this screen. The door won't budge, but I don't see any kind of lock on it. Good point, the door must be controlled by some sort of device positioned elsewhere. Let's head down from here and see what else is around. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. We can head down here. I've never seen such an immense boiler before. This must be the castle's main power source. For some reason, though, it's not currently in use. And what do you make of this other machine here? They're all so gigantic. Well, I, were I to venture a guess, I'd say this equipment was used to mine gold in the area. It's likely the same equipment they used to create that large hole that the castle's flooring. So that's why this place is so drafty. Oh, look at the bizarre smoke coming out of the hole. Don't get too close to it, Professor. I bet breathing is probably terrible for you. Whoever broke the ground here must have known the machinery inside and out. One misplaced scrape of the shovel could have been sent the whole foundation crashing down. Not to be rude, but I don't think we really have time to admire the miner's handiwork. Oh yes, quite right, my boy. Hmm, I believe we can open the door above if we get to the boiler up and running again. Puzzle number 134, Steam Power. And that name right there, it reminded me, like, I was about to be like, I'm surprised Professor Layton hasn't come to the, because, to Steam yet. Uh, it has been confirmed, apparently, that Professor Layton in the Curious Village is coming to Switch, so I was a bit hesitant on whether or not I wanted to let's play this game and be like, oh, maybe I'll wait it out until, like, maybe there's going to be a collection pack of the first three Professor Layton games, but I don't really want to wait it out because uh, chances are I would have, like, a bunch of Layton LPs one after another if I waited any longer than I already have, so... Unfortunately, I have to just go with the DS ones, but not like that's a bad thing. And besides, for Diabolical Box specifically, there's a very good reason why I want to play the DS version and no other, which we'll see before the LP is over. Which valves do you need to open to send steam from the boiler into two, but not one or three? All valves start in the closed position, answering answer using the solution that requires opening the fewest number of valves. Tap a valve to open or close it. Wow, we have steam and valve. Wait, is that the joke? Because valve invented steam, right? Wow, I just got the joke. Okay. And by the way, can I just say how dumb of a name Epic Games is? Okay, whatever. Hint number one. Portions of the pipes connected to two also head to one and three. Make sure that you don't open any valves that let steam reach these other areas. Hint number two. In the solution, the steam is sent from the middle of the three pipes coming out of the boiler. Hint number three. The solution to this puzzle requires that you open three valves. At the first fork in the pipe, head upward. The solution is to twist this one, this one, and this one. Hmm, let's see if this works. Layton, the apprentice strikes again. Vaporific! Sounds like something Chet would say. Good work, my boy. Now, upward and outward. I don't see any other way out of here. There we go. And this room just so happens to be the final photography room. So let's get this done and over with. What do we got here? Uh, the first uh, misstep is right here. There's a crack in the ground when there isn't one in the other picture. Oh, wait, no, it's... A Just bent uh, fence instead. Bent railing, rather. 
It just looks like a crack from this angle. The second one is uh, uh, this lever, which is tilted in a different direction in the other screen. Hmm. Let's see if this works. That was almost too easy. And the third one is this gate, which has different amount of rails, depending on the picture that you're looking at. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. And ooh, the hidden puzzle is not in the final one that they told us to click on. It's actually in a different location. You solved every mystery related to the camera minigame. Things challenges the musician's house has been added to your map. It's actually located on this side. Spooky. Oh, hey, hidden puzzle. Puzzle number 88, the frog's path. The frog sits perched on the on a space labeled S in the diagram below. This little guy has an unusual jump. His first jump travels one space, his second jump travels two spaces, and his third jump travels three spaces. After his third jump, he repeats this pattern. A frog can't change his direction mid-jump, but he can turn around between jumps. This frog's goal is to move through the path below and land exactly on the space marked G. What is the fewest number of jumps he needs to make to do this? Hint number one. The solution for this puzzle requires the frog to jump back the way he came a number of times. Hint number two. Have you ever heard of the saying, take one step forward and two steps back? That old line applies to this puzzle. Hint number three. The frog will need to backtrack a total of two times. So the solution is that the frog can land on the space with just a total of 12 jumps. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. Very, very good. And with that, we are finally done with all the stinking mini games. That one was a lot of work, apparently. It was a lot of work to get all of them done, but we are finally finished with them. And uh, I just noticed that because we have over 100 hint coins, we now have a crowned Professor Layton up on the top of the screen. You don't need to have every hint coin to get that to happen, you just need over 100, which looks very funny. But I think eh, we're at 23 minutes, and we can keep going. I was going to end the episode, but let's see what this has for us. Uh, that was just what we already looked at, my bad. 3DS is red again, so I just... What the fruit? By the look of it, the boiler has been out of commission for quite some time. Okay. Uh, let's just get out of here. Are we headed downward? I don't know what they want us to do. Flee the castle. Didn't want to do that again. Oh, uh, we got this over here. By the look of it, this boiler has been out of commission for quite a while. So, we can't do anything in here, can we? I guess not. This was just where we came from, on the right. So, the only other solution is this door right here. Oh, I thought it was locked, but apparently not. There's a hint coin. Okay, Sulu, there's another hint coin. And finally, there's one on that protruding brick. And a hidden puzzle. This door's shut tight too. The door serves as the only portal out of here. We'll need to open it to escape. Puzzle number 135, the magic lock. It seems that the lock here is some sort of magic square. In order to solve it, position the remaining numbers so that each strain of four vertical, horizontal, and diagonal numbers adds up to the same total. Solve the magic square to do to open the door. Hint number one. You're out to make each horizontal, vertical, and diagonal line of four numbers equal to the same number. So first you need to find that number. The total is there for you to find, so just examine the square until you see it. Hint number two. One diagonal string of numbers appears to be in place already. The numbers within it add up to 18. Hint number three. Three! Now that you know each strain of numbers needs to add up to 18, all you need to do is fill in the blank spaces with the correct tiles. As you start filling in spaces on the square, you'll be left with fewer and fewer squares to work with. Lay down a line and make sure it totals 18, and then keep on working with what you've got. You'll make your way to the solution sooner or later. I just realized, if these games do get ported to the Switch, they better include a stinking stylus, because like the Switch 
is a touchscreen console, but it doesn't come with a stinking stylus. Seriously, Nintendo? Like, my god. There's so many stinking complaints with the Switch, but whatever. Everyone else likes it. Saved the company, blah, blah, blah. So, whatever. This should do the trick. And there we have it. Over 4,000 picarats. Very nice. Each horizontal, vertical, and diagonal line of the four tiles adds up to 18 when placed in the correct positions. Now, onward to freedom. Luke, the vent is open now. Follow me. Uh, we already got the three coins here, right? So, what does that say? Was this taken from the mine? Okay, whatever. Just head in here. Oh, this is a bit awkward. Word. Hopefully, you won't try to murder us. Uh, you, you mind I, if I just like collect these hint coins real quick? Kind of important to me, even though I don't really need any more because I already got the crown Layton. Okay, well, let's talk to you. Take care that you don't slip, Luke. This floor is polished to an almost blinding shine. Wow, you're right. It's almost like a mirror. Who do you think does all this polishing? That would be me, sir. Ah, it's the butler! Yes, I most certainly am. I don't mean to be presumptuous, but what are you two doing up at this hour? If you're having trouble falling asleep, I suggest a good, strong puzzle to clear and relax the mind. You're not going to try to stop us or anything? Stop you? Young yes, sir, I have the foggiest notion what you're talking about. Now, where was I? Ah, oh, yes, that puzzle. This hall has been fitted with a hidden door. Though, to my char chagrin, I've forgotten where. However, I do recall an old saying that the servants used in the days past to remember the location of the door. I will now relate to you what that saying and your task, dear guests, will be to decipher the door's location. Leave the explanation for the actual explanation. The hidden door, it's kind of weird that they have a puzzle with that name considering what the phrase hidden door means in the Professor Layton universe. Begin from the doors etched in the decor. A path will appear strong and quite clear, made of the stars that flare, each within its own square. These words are said to point the way to the hidden door. Select the hidden door. Hint number one. Begin from the doors etched in the decor. The doors in question are located in the lower right portion of the picture, but what exactly do you begin doing from there? Hint number two. A path will appear strong and quite clear made of stars that flare each within its own square. To simplify the statement, the stars on the floor that are completely enclosed in individual squares will guide you to the hidden door. Hint number three. If you highlight all of the tiles that neatly enclose a star, they will form a large arrow in the floor. The tile that arrow points to is the location of the hidden door. The solution is right here. This should do the trick. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. You can see there's a arrow etched in the wall with the stars, and that is where the hidden door is located. Masterfully solved, sirs. Now that you've completed that little nightcap, might I suggest returning to your quarters? These old halls can get quite drafty in the dead of night. I'll have to keep that in mind. Good night to you. <laughs> and to you too. And to my 3DS, because it's about to die. Okay, we're going to end this off right here while I go charge my 3DS. Next time on Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box, we'll try to not get murdered. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I'll see you all later. Good night. Oh, that's going to be a really awkward outro if this is the second to last episode. <gasps>